Uh, you may have seen the movie Anchorman, and there's a character called Rick. And uh, that character is pretty famous, but second only to one, the real Rick Suit. I have to, here yeah. on set with us at the RNC convention. That being said, I, I do love Lamp. <laughs> Yeah, you have been a light to so many at these MAGA rallies, and I've never seen anybody with such a determination. You've driven through snow, rain, sleet, tornadoes, maybe hurricanes, I'm not exactly sure. But you are at virtually every MAGA rally. As many as I can get to. Yes. I, you know, I have not been to them all, but I, I go if I can get there, I'm going to go. Hundreds, maybe. Hundreds well, President Trump has said that. He said, you know, he's been to hundreds and I'm not going to contradict him because he's always correct. And Trump calls you wall man, brick man. Wall man. Uh, he called me Irving Q wall once. <laughs> uh, wall guy. It just says that most beautiful suit I've ever seen, you know, things like that. So a couple a couple different names. And, you know, at some point it'll be he'll say brick suit. And that is when I know it will be official. Uh, yeah, I want to get. Really quickly, I want to cover something for those who don't know you or perhaps of you, even though you are quite Internet famous, hundreds of thousands of followers. Uh, the suit represents the wall that you wish to be built to secure our border. Is that correct? correct? Yes. Okay. It's a metaphor for strong border controls. Now, no, no border wall or border fence is going to be 100 percent effective yep. in stopping things from coming across our border. But it will reduce human trafficking. It will yes. reduce drug trafficking and it will reduce the amount of you know the gotaways or the unknowns that come across the border which are the worst people coming across yeah. because they know they can't make it through a checkpoint and get asylum yeah. so it will reduce all of that and i i feel the expense of of building and completing the border fence is worth it yes okay yeah. great so now that we've introduced you to the audience you were in pennsylvania at the rally where president trump was shot by a Joe Biden donor who was inexplicably able to crawl across a rooftop for what seems to be an eternity in, in, full, in full sight of the Secret Service. And you had a front row, I believe, or close to it, seat. Is that correct? I was in the front row, right on the rail, standing up pretty much almost perfectly in front of the podium, maybe four feet to one side. So I was roughly 10 yards away. So it abs you could have absolutely taken a bullet. Uh, in theory, yeah. Completely. I mean, the you know, the guy could have absolutely fired. I mean, that's remarkable, but also you witnessed this moment. Yeah. Can you tell me what you witnessed? Sure. Um, well, it happened early in the rally. Enthusiasm at a Trump rally is always high at the beginning and this was no exception so everybody was still standing i was right up against the rail and he had just recently like maybe like 30 seconds prior introduced a slide that showed the corresponding difference between the level of low illegal immigration under president trump and astronomically high immigration under joe biden and i was looking at that at the left jumbotron so i was not looking at the president when i heard the first group of noises so when I heard those, I said, well, that's just like a bad joke. What is this, a prank or something? And, and I felt it was more to my left. And I looked to my left to see if I could see something in the audience that would indicate it's local, like smoke bomb going off or something like that. I didn't see anything like that. So I looked back towards the president on the stage. He was no longer there. And all I see are Secret Service members coming up and piling on top of him. At that point in time, there's like a second set of noises and... That's when you put it together that this is not a prank, this is not a joke, this is gunfire, and this is an assassination attempt. What was the first time that you saw the president afterwards? Because it, it was an eternity for all of us watching live. Mm -hmm. Everybody said, my goodness, I, I may have just witnessed the death of a president. That thought did come to my mind. Now, I wasn't, I, I very rarely film the president when he's speaking. Um, and my, this was no exception. I actually... I had to drop down and pick up my phone from underneath my, my seat and, and get it. And when when I felt it was safe and there was no, no gunfire, I stood back up. I was very concerned with the president's safety and I, I was trying to get high enough to see. But by the podium, there's also kind of like a parapet. And he, since he was flat on the ground behind that, I could not see him at all. But I could hear what the Secret Service was saying. And I didn't sense, I mean, they're very professional, but I didn't sense anything that was disastrous they weren't saying he's been hit they weren't calling for medics they weren't 
saying anything that made me feel really bad or, or, an or overly anxious until they said, let's get ready to move him or words to that effect. And then they started a countdown. And when they did that, I'm like, that sounds like you're moving an inanimate object. You know, let's yeah. get ready to move him. And I just thought, are they going to be carrying him out? And luckily he stood up and I could see that he was standing. And then, you know, I could see his face. I'm, I'm still just, you know, 10 yards away and I could see his face. I could see the determination in his eye. I could see him raise his fist and shake it towards the crowd. And then closely thereafter, I saw the blood on his ear and I could tell it wasn't coming from his ear. I could tell it was coming from the top of his ear. So I, I thought that was really good. And, you know, I, I had real hope then that he was going to be okay. Now, when Reagan was shot, nobody knew that he was really seriously injured until they had him into the car because he had a body injury that didn't have an exit wound and wasn't bleeding, obviously. So I was still concerned that he might have something like that. Yes. You know, but when I saw him walking off the stage after he let the crowd know he was okay, and that's what it was. I mean, it's a look of defiance. Yes. It's, I'm still here, but it was also letting everybody know that he was okay. Because I'll tell you, if they had just put him in the car and whisked him away, we would have been two or three hours of nobody knowing what was going on. Oh, that's right. And who knows what would have happened in those two and three hours? Somebody getting so upset that they do something that they can't take back. You know? Oh, people would have been sick to death. Yes. Correct. And Correct. perhaps that was the plan all along, right? Was And it seems like almost an ongoing plan is to agitate people with the the sheer hubris mm -hmm. um you don't have to be you, whatever the term conspiracy theorist has no meaning anymore right and all the conspiracy theorists have all been right so maybe they'll be right about this but you have uh, somebody who's there who may well have taken a stray bullet and in cory compentory we love him mm -hmm. we donate to his family we love yeah, him he's a hero we care about him he's a hero and you actually see in the sight line he actually took a bullet for trump I don't think people quite understand that no, he took a yeah. bullet truly for that was intended for the president Trump. Um, but as as you see that you're extremely online person, mm -hmm. as you see what many are saying about the catastrophic security failures or intentional failures mm -hmm. either way. Um, it must really mean something to you. And, and also it must like as somebody who experienced it firsthand. The, it must, it must, you must have a profound take on it. Um, what do you think actually happened? Well, I can tell you that from my perspective, entering the the venue, there was nothing about the security that was markedly different from anything else. In fact, I thought it was probably maybe even a little bit better. They actually checked my boots this time. Interesting. They don't always do that. Interesting. So everything seemed according to plan. And what I think happened is to take a model from air, airline incidents where you have a catastrophic air crash. It's kind of what's called the Swiss cheese model. There's a lot of things that prevent an accident from happening. But when you have a vulnerability here and a vulnerability here and another one there, and they all line up, that allows the accident to take place. That to me is the simplest explanation. We all know that as people, as humans, we are fallible and in this case, what I think happened is gross miscommunication between the agencies responsible for the security on that building and the Secret Service and a couple other things that have been identified by like a communication net that wasn't rapid enough to be able to pass along the information from the bystanders who saw him there and called it in. So yeah, I, I think the most likely explanation is just of a combination of things went wrong that in this case allowed that individual to get on that roof and take the shot. Did you see, did you experience or hear a second shooter of any type or anything like that? I heard a second group of shots, but I don't know where they were from. Two distinct groups of shots. And that says, you know, I'm not an expert in ballistics. I, the first one I localized was coming from my left. The second one happened when I was looking forward. And I didn't perceive anything as having come from my right at all. Okay. So it could have been simply the assassin and then the counterfire. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Uh, did you experience anything else strange uh, at the rally or anything that seemed off? You know, we've no. both been to a lot of MAG rallies. Correct. Kind of 
they kind of they, they they tend to be run similarly all mm -hmm. of them yeah yeah nothing no seemed to be nothing off. nothing seemed off at all very very normal just you know there's no such thing as a run-of-the-mill trump rally because they're always exciting yeah. and there's always something new that he brings up but this one was very much as all the others were and your experience with the secret service they've taken uh low to hell mm -hmm. for DEI officers incapable of holstering their weapons, women who are two feet shorter than Trump guarding Trump, supposed to cover him in a live fire. You know, you you were right up close. Mm -hmm. The Trump family's been in these chairs and they've said, you know, they know all those secrets. They know my name, actually. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, but even they agree these this these are these are catastrophic mistakes. Correct. And I and I'm 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 assuming they're gonna be corrected sooner i the, the president's detail when he came into the arena <laughs> noticeably different makeup yeah. i mean really you know noticeably, noticeably different and, and and obviously the, the president clearly the yeah. president is a, a tall man yes he's six three right yeah. so i mean if your job is to cover him from gunfire and you are a foot shorter than him you're not going to do a very effective yes. job yes. so just on a on a height requirement uh I think that that's that's something that should be looked at. That being said, the Secret Service agents that were immediately on the stage that I could witness, I felt did as incredible and as a selfless a job as could be expected. They did they execute it perfectly. Mm -hmm. In some cases, no. All right, but in the heat of the moment, I think they deserve a little bit of uh, a little bit of slack for not being picture perfect. Mm -hmm. um, I thought they reacted rapidly. They put their bodies in harm's way to cover the president from any potential further gunfire. They waited till the situation was secure, coordinated to move him off the stage, and uh, you know. President Trump, I think, was fighting him a little bit. He wanted to get that. He wanted to get that fist pump out he there. Did. He wanted people to know he was well. <laughs> he did, and you know, and many and, were here. Many and, uh, were here saying. Many were here saying. You know, Eric Prince was sitting right there, and he's the foremost security expert on planet Earth, saying, "How dare they? How dare they let Trump speak again? You know, or show his face again? I mean, this." Mm -hmm. He he just went through like what a cat, and I I'm saying that's the greatest moment on Earth. I made a T-shirt out of it. Right. But he's saying that is ni a nightmarish. Correct. Utter catastrophic failure on their part to let Trump put his head out there again. Correct. Now, um, you know, I'm sure that they had some confirmation that the shooter was down. Yeah. I'm assuming that they had that, but of course you don't know if there's another shooter. Yeah. So that's, that's right. probably why that's right. it's best in, in that situation not to have that. Yeah. But as I said before, had he just been whisked off the stage and put into the van um, and, and driven away, there would have been speculation just as... I mean, just incredible That's amounts right. of speculation. I'm so do, thankful. Do you remember? Do you remember when Hillary lost her shoe and they threw her into the Scooby van like <laughs> right. a side of beef? That's right. Do you remember that? That's I mean, like, right. and everybody thought Hillary might be like, "What's going on with her?" And she came out like, "Oh, I'm perfect." They're like, yeah. "No, somebody posted a video. You get thrown into a van like a side of beef." I mean, I remember was, that. Brick. But this is different. Brick. That was Hillary number two. Oh, I know. Hillary I know. Four she, was the, it just fine? The purse and they was sent on the, her out. They sent the wrong glasses, <laughs> and the purse was on the wrong shoulder. We all know this, but Hillary. Four is my favorite, Hillary. The point I'm trying to make is, <laughs> had that happened according to protocol, we would have had yeah, a very exactly dark right. couple of hours Thank in which right. nobody would have believed anything that was released about the help yeah. of the president. But because he did take the time to pump his fist and and begin, you know, say some stuff to the crowd, people had a feeling he was well. Now, me being as close as I was, I could yeah. see it with my own eyes. You could have taken a bullet at this rally, brick. But you really could have beyond that. All right. So I could tell that he was okay. Yeah. So, but if you were in the 20th row or you were, and there were thousands of people here, if you were way in the back, yeah, you wouldn't have known what happened. And so him, him doing that was visible to everybody. And I just, you know, I'm really glad that he did it. And I'm sure the secret service is not, <laughs> I, I imagine they are not, but um, I personally am glad that he did that because I think it really, it really let us know that he was probably going to be okay. Final question. I think it's like, it's particularly fascinating because there's been so much, so much anger uh, against the secret service and the, and those in charge, right? Actually of this, the, the people who make the executive decisions. Correct. My final question to you is this, you seem quite forgiving actually being somebody who was, hey, listen, man, you're a few, you're a number of feet. You're as close as I am to the end of this table from those bullets flying uh, mm -hmm. past you. You heard them when they were shot. You you right. heard the bullet before it hit Trump's ear. You were that close. 
and you seem quite forgiving uh, of the entire experience. Has this changed you at all? Um, you don't seem particularly bitter about about these failures. Um, what what are what are your takeaways from this? Well, I I'm not. Yeah, clearly mistakes that were made. Yeah. And they're going to have to do an investigation about it. And yeah. one of the weird things is we're going to want the entire truth. Of course. But keep in mind, we don't want the Secret Service to tell us all the secret sauce about how they protect the president. There's yeah. probably certain things that are going to have to be redacted in that report because they're going to give away exactly the protocol of, of how course. they protect the president. And then that might reveal future weaknesses. So it's difficult, but I'm just going to wait for the full report. Um you know, the, the officers I saw were exemplary. And I, I could tell you, man, did I tell you what President Trump said to me on Monday night? Please. All right. When I, when he came in the, into the arena as a surprise on Monday night, I was able to get up right against the rope line. And I did not know he was going to be leaving that way. Just didn't know until Secret Service comes up and says, hey, you know, don't reach across. If he wants to, he'll stop to you. Came down the steps and he's walking by. He saw me and came up to me and shook hands, looked me in the eye, and he said, that was a hell of a day, wasn't it? And I said, yes, it was, sir. And the truth is, President Trump's a hell of a man, and we're lucky to have him. And I believe the Secret Service will correct the problems they had and make him safer than ever. Incredible. That was a hell of a day. Yeah. What, what an animal. <laughs> what an animal, this man. What a lion. Yeah. What a, what a lion. 100%. Just, <laughs> I mean, it's just, that made me feel really good because yes. I that's, that's the character of President Trump that I know. And to hear him say that, 100%. Yes. 100%. What a validation for a guy who's been at this from day one. Yeah. The great brick suit. All right, Benny, good to see you again. Thank you. All right. Wow. <laughs>